Hello everyone. My name is Anurag Bhatt, and today I'll briefly describe you the topic of flash memories. Under this topic, we will study what are flash memories, different layouts of flash memories, its working principle, and uh, recent innovations in memory such as vertical NAND. So, what are flash memories? Flash memory is an electronic computer storage medium that can be electrically erased and reprogrammed. It is non-volatile, therefore, it retains its data even if the power is cut off. Flash ROM is a variant of EEPROM with a slight difference. EEPROM allows individual bytes to be erased, and uh, whereas flash ROM allowed erasure only in large chunks. Therefore, flash memory is faster than EEPROM. The basic device that is used in flash memory is a floating gate transistor. The floating gate transistor is a variant of MOSFET in which an additional gate is kept in between control gate and body. This gate is sandwiched between two dielectric traces. Therefore, this is known as a floating gate, and it is electrically isolated. Therefore, the data which is encoded depends upon the amount of charge which is trapped in this floating gate. There can be different approaches for bit value encoding. One such approach is to uh, is having two charge states, one with have, which has a negative charge and one which has no charge. Let's assume that the one with a negative charge has a bit value zero, and the one which has a no charge uh, has bit value one. This is known as single level cell or SLC. We can also have MLC, that is multi level cell, in which there are more than two charge states. And more than one bit per floating gate transistor are encoded. Now let's see the layouts of flash memories. In first figure, the floating gate transistors are connected with each other in parallel, and they resemble a NMOS NOR gate. Therefore, it is known as a NOR flash memory. In the second case, the floating gate transistors are connected to each other in series. Therefore, it resembles a NMOS NAND gate, and and hence it is called a NAND flash memory. Now let's see the working. Let's see how the data is read from the flash memory. Consider these two charge states. For bit value one, when we give a voltage VT one, a channel is set up between source and drain, and we get a current ID. When we plot a graph of ID versus VGS at VT one, after VT one, we start getting the current ID for bit value one. Now consider this floating gate transistor. It has some negative charges on its floating gate. Therefore, these charges will screen some of the positive charge on this control gate. Hence, a larger voltage is required to set up a channel and to get the current. Therefore, as in the graph, uh, it specifies VT zero. After VT zero, we get start getting the current for bit value zero. To read the value, we give a intermediate voltage in between these two voltages and read the value of current at that voltage. If we get a positive current, the red value is value one. If we get a zero value current, then the red value is value zero. In NOR reading, what we do is, if we are interested in reading the state, uh, reading this transistor. We give an intermediate voltage to the gate of this transistor. We want the current reading of this transistor. In the same time, we want to block the current of all the other transistors. Hence, we give a low voltage, that is V off, to all the, all the other transistors. Hence, depending upon the value of the current at this intermediate voltage, we decide whether the red value is one or zero. Similarly, in NAND reading, if we are interested in reading this transistor, we give an intermediate voltage to the gate of this transistor. And as these transistors are connected in series, if we want the current through this transistor, we have to uh, the, all the other transistors should be conducting. Hence, we give a high voltage to the gate of all the other transistors, and uh, we get a current. And depending on the value of that current at this intermediate voltage, we determine whether the red value is one or zero. Now, writing and erasing. <coughs> in writing, the electrons are pushed on the floating gate. It has two methods: hot electron injection and polar nordium tunneling. Erasing is opposite of writing. In this, the electrons are drained off the floating gate, and this can be done using the method of polar nordium tunneling. Now, in hot electron injection, we give a high voltage, high source to drain voltage. Therefore, the electrons are accelerated. When the electrons are accelerated, they gain a kinetic energy. When this kinetic energy becomes greater than the barrier potential, the electrons cross the barrier and enter the floating gate. To, uh, for the motion of electrons in this direction, it should have a electric field. That electric field is set up by this gate, gate to source voltage. So, uh, due to the electric field, the uh, the uh, the electrons are pushed from this channel to this floating gate and are trapped in the floating gate. The second method is polar nordium tunneling. In this, a flotox transistor is used. Flotox is a floating gate tunnel oxide transistor. In this. The tunnel, uh, the the oxide thickness is reduced in between drain and the floating gate. So what what we do is we give a high voltage, high positive voltage to the control gate. Therefore, the electrons from this drain are attracted to this positive voltage, 
and because the thickness is less, the electrons cross this barrier and are trapped into this floating loop. Therefore, in non writing, we use hot electron injection. injection. In, uh, as, so, as seen, uh, we give a high voltage to source, uh, source and uh, source to drain. Therefore, we give a high voltage to bit line. But this voltage is applied to all the transistors. To get a uh, to write to a specific transistor, we have to set up a channel. To set up a channel, we give a high gate voltage to that, uh, to that respective transistor and low voltage to all the other transistors. Therefore, zero is written to that specific transistor. In NAND writing, we use a tunneling method. We apply a high voltage to the gate of the transistor that, that we are interested in. Due to that high voltage, the electrons from drain are attracted and they cross the barrier and are uh, trapped into the floating gate. Therefore, zero is written to the transistor. Erasing. In erasing, we do the exact opposite of what we did for writing. We give a negative high voltage to this control gate. Therefore, the electrons that are present in this floating gate are repelled due to this high negative voltage and they are drained off through this oxide because the thickness is less uh, and they are drained off the floating gate. So, in non erasing, we give negative high voltage to the gates of all the transistors. Hence, all the transistors undergo uh, erasure at once and one is written to all the transistors. Similarly, in NAND erasing, we give minus ne uh, or negative high voltage to all the transistors and they are erased at once. So, which topology to use, whether NAND or not, depends upon the ad its advantages and advantages. Uh, NAND has the advantage of uh, ha having higher storage density, therefore it is used for USB drives, memory cards, solid state drives. And NOR has the advantage of having lower latency, therefore it is used in embedded systems. The advantages uh, of flash are faster read and write, small size, cheaper, use less power and uh, ha has less noise. Disadvantages are it has limited write cycles. Uh, this happens because electrons have high energy and they collide with the oxide. When they collide with the oxide, they damage the oxide after multiple writes. Therefore, for single uh, level uh, uh, cell, the maximum write cycles are 100k. For multi-level cell, the maximum write cycles are 1k to 10k. The other disadvantage is that the charges are stored on a conductor. Hence, the short circuit elements cause memory wearouts and ultimately the floating gate transistor gets short circuited. This disadvantage is overcome using a 3D vertical NAND. Now let's see what is a 3D vertical NAND. Uh, the, planar, the planar NAND has undergone shrinking from 120 nanometer to 19 nanometer. As we undergo more shrinking, two problems occur, cell to cell interference and patterning. Uh, when charge flows in one cell due to uh, the coupling effect, some charge also flows in neighboring cell and, uh, and changes the stored data, that is cell to cell uh, interference. And in patterning, it is basically a manufacturing technology uh, it developed, uh, which is developed for photolithography to enhance density. It also has a limit as we shrink the technology. To overcome these problems, uh, 3D vertical NAND was developed. The 3D vertical NAND uses a charge trap flash architecture instead of floating gate. What it does is in charge trap flash, it uses an insulator to store the charges instead of using a conductor in case of floating gate. So this uh, figure shows the innovations of a uh, vertical NAND. First, a floating gate transistor was used to store the charges. Next, a, in 2D charge trap flash, a insula insulator was used to store, store the charges. Next innovation was a 3D charge trap flash in which the charge trap flash wa was wrapped in, in the form of a cylinder. And when we stack multiple of these uh, 3D charge trap flash uh, on one, uh, one after the other, we get a 3D vertical NAND. Uh, the uh, Samsung invented a 24 layer 3D vertical NAND in 2013, a 32 layer 3D vertical NAND in 2014 and it is preparing to begin mass production of 48 layer vertical NAND in 2015. So this technology sh uh, shift is considered the biggest in 30 years of memory industry. So the advantages of vertical NAND or planar, planar NAND are it has more capacity, more speed, more endurance, more power efficiency and greater cell density. Therefore, vertical NAND is the future of uh, SSD. The applications of flash memories are uh, it is used, it can be, it, they, they are used in pen drives, memory cards, micro SD cards, cell phones, tablets, etc. So, this was everything about flash memories. Uh, these are my references from which I have taken the information about, uh, about the flash memories. Thank you for watching.